Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with Dr. Axel Dignas. He's joining us here to discuss findings from the Phase 2B Quasar trial evaluating Trimphia. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Dr. Dignas, thank you for taking the time. Yeah, it's a great pleasure to be with you today. Well, give us a little bit of insight into your professional background. Tell us a bit about who you are. So my name is uh, Axel Dignas. I'm based in Frankfurt, Germany. I'm uh, having a long time interest in the research of IBD, especially clinical trials and biologics and immunosuppressive. I have been uh, the past president of UG and I'm a member of the International Organization of Inflammatory Bowel Diseases and have a long, long background in uh, developing guidelines for um, inflammatory bowel diseases, so including ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. We are now for Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis in phase two studies, uh, so it will be uh, hopefully available in, in a couple of years uh, when these trials have been finalized. Well, then let's talk about this trial, the phase 2B Quasar trial evaluating Trimphia. When did this trial begin? Um, so this is uh, a very important uh, trial, <laughs> which uh, I had just the pleasure to present uh, the interim analysis of the 12-week data uh, at the uh, International Congress of uh, ECHO, uh, which took place in February, uh, so the largest uh, IBD Congress in the world, usually attending uh, more than 7,000 uh, people, where the most recent re research is presented. And Quasar is a phase to be randomized double blind placebo controlled dose range in study to evaluate the efficacy and safety of guzelcomab uh, as induction therapy in patients with um, ulcerative colitis and in this case patients with moderately to severely ulcerative colitis uh, who had an inadequate response or intolerance to all conventional therapies. These are thiopurines or corticosteroids or even advanced therapies, um, so anti-TNF uh, therapies, vedolizumab or tofacitinib, which are the currently uh, approved uh, treatment options for patients with ulcerative colitis. There is one more. Uh, this is ustekinumab, um, which is a combined IL-23 and IL-12 blocker, and uselcumab, um, is a selective interleukin 23P9 subunit antagonist, so it's even more selective than ustekinumab. So what were some of the key findings? It's uh, very interesting. I, I think uh, and the most important thing is that in patients with this type of UC, so moderately to severely active UC, failing uh, um, conventional treatment and in half of the patient even failing advanced therapies, the induction with guselcomab demonstrated clinically really meaningful improvements uh, versus placebo across all key endpoints, and uh, these endpoints were clinical response, clinical remission, uh, endoscopic response, a very, very tough endpoint of combined histological and endoscopic improvement at week 12. Um, there were two doses tested. Uh, 200 milligram and 400 milligram IV were uh, administered every four weeks, and both doses were comparable, no uh, significant difference, and the, both doses were significantly um, superior to um, placebo. Another very important finding, and this is a very important finding for patients with a chronic uh, disease. Um, the safety results were really consistent with the known safety profile of Guselcomab in other approved indications. So there were no death, no um, uh, severe adverse events, no uh, increase in infections. So it's, it's a very efficacious but also very safe um, opportunity to treat our patients. Was there any data to suggest uh, success past the 12-week point? Um, <laughs> This is the ongoing trial, so the patients um, uh, are treated in a pre-true uh, trial, so they, um, all the patients who have responded uh, are followed up for another 52 weeks. Um, 
So we will get hopefully this data by the end of the year. Um, but as it's a, a randomized, double-blind uh, study, um, we do not have the data at the moment because the trial is still ongoing and no uh, unblinding is, is done during the trial. Um, but um, from our clinical experience, um, also in other indications, and there is other data out for Crohn's disease, uh, we uh, see that uh, the effect will be carried on over a long-term period. Was there anything glaringly unexpected that uh, was revealed in this study? Was there anything um, unique? No. When, when you do such a trial, you you hope that it will be efficacious. Um, it's it's a very high efficacy, um, but knowing from from uh, other indications, um, we were hoping that it would be as efficacious as it is. And uh, especially, as I pointed out, uh, there were no adverse events uh, that were unexpected. So uh, everything turned out as we hoped and we were planning the trial. Other than having moderate to severe UC, were there any other conditions that the uh, candidates had that could um, sway the study one way or the other? Now, this is typical now for, for most of the clinical trials so that the patients are really uh, selected according to very uh, strict inclusion and exclusion criteria. So usually uh, the patients are pre-screened to exclude any infectious uh, diseases. They are pre-screened uh, to, to exclude ongoing cancer, uh, for instance, or uh, cancer which, which is not, not already uh, seen. So usually... Um, it's fairly uh, well characterized patient population. There will be more data coming out, and I'm looking forward to see this because uh, more than 25% of patients with ulcerative colitis suffer from so called extra intestinal manifestations. So they have joint pain or arthralgia, uh, uh, uveitis, um, skin manifestations, and all these uh, will be. Um, evaluated in the further course of the trial, and, and we will also get more data, for instance, on um, histology, we'll get more data on, on objective markers like calprotectin, um, biomarkers like CRP, and uh, what is more important then for the long term, uh, we also look uh, at quality of life, uh, for instance, uh, some more and additional patient reported outcomes um, we, we look at uh, the rapidity of the response, and this is probably some, some point I would, would like to emphasize. Um, it seems that, that this drug is quite rapid in the onset of the response. Uh, we saw that really a significant number of patients uh, had a mucosal healing um, already at week 12, and uh, like the conventional drugs are not able uh, to achieve such a, such a rapid response. So there were um, about one third of the patients having an endoscopic response, and there were 27% um, uh, of the patients having a combined histoendoscopic mucosal improvement. So even on histology, very, very objective, you see that there is an improvement as early as week 12, and it may be even earlier, but the final endpoint for this part of the trial was week 12. Well, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio, uh, Doctor. Is there anything else that you'd like to add briefly for our listeners? Thank all the investigators uh, and uh, sponsors of this trial to make it possible to evaluate new treatment options for patients with ulcerative colitis. And, and because despite so many treatment options, there's still a great need for additional treatments. Um, as I pointed out, 50% of the patients in this trial had already failed advanced therapies. And uh, without the help of the patients and the investigators, we would not have the chance um, to do something to improve the lives of our patients in the near future. So I would like to thank uh, all patients and all colleagues who helped to get this data. Great. Well, I appreciate you joining us here. Thank you so much for uh, your time. Thank you so much. It was a great pleasure. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Axel Disnas. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.